All right, we're going to look at the graphs of sine and cosine. And this table here you should have, and you also should have, if you didn't get to it in class, that's okay, but you should know how to fill out uh, the answers to all of these that I have here. All right, so one way or another, you, may, you need to make sure you can fill this chart out by yourself. Um, so one thing we should note about the sine graph is, remember where um, the sine function comes from, right? It, as in the last video, we talked about it being the height of a point traveling counterclockwise around the circle. It's the height as a function of the angle. In other words, you give me an angle, and we're, I can tell you what the height of my point will be at that time. So when the angle is pi over 2, the height of the point is 1. When the angle is pi or 180 degrees, the height of the point is 0. Okay, so that's what we're graphing. It's just that we're graphing the angles on the x-axis. So we're graphing, we're graphing the sine function in the xy plane, where the x values are my angles that I rotated. And the y value is the height of the point, or the sine of theta. Sine of theta. Okay, so um, we're going to graph these points. And one thing, one thing you should understand is that the the key key values to get the overall shape of the sine graph are these ones. If you have these, you have the overall shape. The the ones that are in between the multiples of pi over four. Those are to just get you to see the uh, sort of the details of the shape. A lot of students graph their sine graphs really like rigidy and, and pointy, but that's not the case. Um, so we're going to graph these. And by the way, um, you know, the sine of pi over 2 is 1 because when you rotate pi over 2, the y coordinate or the height of the point is 1. So all of these. All those y values correspond to the sine of the, the angle at a given angle. So let's graph it. 0, 0, pi over 2, 1, pi 0, 3 pi over 2, negative 1, 2 pi 0, negative pi over 2, negative 1. Just reading, just reading what I have on the table. All right, and again, to prevent you from doing rigidy, you know, really pointy, pointy sine, sine graphs, um, because that, that's not how it works, right? The, the height of this point is moving very smoothly and continuously. So uh, if we note that the 1 over root 2 is about 0 0.7, 0 0.70, that'll help us plot, for instance, pi over 4. 0.7, and when you do that, you kind of get a sense. Uh, and 3 pi over 4 would be also a y value of 0.7. That at least just gives you a sense that it's not so rigidy. There's some curvature. All right. So here's what the graph looks like. Taking a lot of focus because this pen isn't good. But I think it's doing all right. Except for that last little piece. Oh, uh -huh. not both. Yeah. Um, so there's a couple of things while I'm finishing this graph. A couple of things you want to notice about it, or you might notice. One is that it repeats, right? The sine graph repeats. And that that makes sense because imagine this point moving around the circle. After it rotates one full rotation, right, it's just going to repeat. Its height is going to repeat the values that it, that it was before. Okay, so um, the length of one repetition, the length of one repetition is called the period. So the period of sine is, well, let's see, when does it start to repeat? It repeats after two pi radians, or 360 degrees. And again, that's for no the, for the same reason. 
this, the height of the point is going to repeat after it rotates one full rotation or two pi radians. So, um, so we say that the sine function is periodic. Okay, so it's periodic, and I have the definition of periodic here, which we'll talk about more in class. Function is periodic, so you do want to copy this down. A function is periodic if there's a positive real number, p, such that for all x values, f of x plus p equals f of x. All right, so all that means is it means that, for instance, the sine of pi over 2, so the sine of pi over 2, so we'll let this be you know, f of uh, f of not f of x, it's theta. That's okay, f of theta equals sine theta. So what is f of what is f of pi over 2? In other words, the sine of pi over 2. It's 1, right? It's 1. Sine of pi over 2 is 1. Do we ever get, or, or when is the next time we would get the sine to be, uh, what, for what angle would we get the sine to be 1 again? If we trace this, right, and then keep going, the question is, it's going to be 1 over here. What is that angle? And it's easy to see what that angle is because this function repeats every 2 pi radians. So looking over here, right, after you rotate pi over 2, the sine of pi over 2 is 1. When does it get to be 1 again? Well, you rotate, right, this whole rotation. And what is that? Pi over 2, 2 pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, 4 pi over 2, 5 pi over 2. 5 pi over 2 is when it happens again. But 5 pi over 2 is just pi over 2 plus a full rotation. Right? We rotated back around and got to the same place. Right? So that's why it's periodic. All it means is the, there's a p-value that you can just keep adding to an x-value, and you're going to keep getting the same answers. So these are both 1. Okay? Um, so the period, the period of the function is just the smallest p-value. So I could also add 4 pi, right? I could add 4 pi, because if I add 4 pi, that means I go around from here once, twice, but I wouldn't say 4 pi is the period because um, 2 pi is the smallest value for which this is true. Right? If I rotate around just 2 pi, I'll get back to where I started. So we say that 2 pi is the period of the function. Okay, so again, there's the sine graph. You need to be able to graph it uh, without a calculator on demand. And you don't, need, uh, you don't need to put in the pi over 4, 3 pi over 4 values. What you really just need to know are these points, and that will give you the shape of our sine graph.